even Muhammad had no assurance of salvation. Muhammad didn't know what he what was going to happen to him after he died. And so you Muslims out there who think, oh, I'm going to heaven. You know, I'm, I've been going to the mosque and I've been praying five times a day. Muhammad said he didn't know what was going to happen to him. Isn't exactly. that right? hundred percent. And the reason why is because who better than Muhammad to know the kind of God uh, that he's that he's worshiping? Muhammad knew Allah better than any other Muslim. So because he knew Allah, he knew that he could not feel secure from Allah. Because according to chapter 46, verses 8 to 9 of the Quran, let me just see, read to you what the Quran says. And I challenge any Muslim to find something comparable in the New Testament in regards to the Lord Jesus or his followers. Show me any, anywhere in the New Testament where the blessed apostles of Christ said something similar to Muhammad, where Jesus, whom you think is a prophet, no more, no less, said something similar to what I'm about to read to you from the mouth of Muhammad as recorded in the Quran. Chapter 46, verses 8 to 9, particularly verse 9. Or do they say he has forged it? Say, commands given to Muhammad to say the following. If I have forged it, you have no power to help me against Allah. See, if I forge it, then you can't help me against Allah. He knows very, very well what you are pressing upon. He suffices as a witness between me and you. He is the all-forgiving, the all-compassionate. Say, I am not in innovation among the messengers, and I know not what shall be done with me or with you. Can you imagine Jesus going around saying, look, follow me, but hey, guys, you follow me, let me just be up front with you. I don't know what's going to be done with me or with you, but still follow me anyway. I only follow what is revealed to me. I'm only a clear warner. Quite clearly, Muhammad does not know what Allah will do ultimately with him or those who follow him or the disbelievers. Now, someone will say, well, that's not referring to salvation. That's talking about maybe some, something that will take place in, in time and space. Muhammad doesn't know if tomorrow he's going to get shot by an arrow or he's going to fall off the steps and break his neck. That's what he's talking about. Well, let's see what Sal Bukhari <clears throat> Sahel Bukhari, Volume 5, Book 58, Number 266 says, Bukhari, Volume 5, Number 266, which you can find online. Narrated Um al-Ala, an Ansari woman who gave the Pledge of Allegiance to the Prophet, that the Ansar drew lots concerning the dwelling of the immigrants. Uthman bin Mazun was decided to dwell with them. Uthman fell ill, and I nursed him till he died, and we covered him with his clothes. Then the Prophet came to us, and I was addressing the dead body, saying, O Abu Sayyib, may Allah's mercy be, uh, be upon you. I bear witness, she's saying, that Allah has honored you. On that, the Prophet said, how do you know that Allah has honored him? I replied, I do not know. May my father and mother be sacrificed for you, O Allah's apostle. But who else is worthy of it? She knew what kind of exemplary life this man lived, how righteous and pious he was. If anyone's worthy of such honor... <laughs> Oops, see, that's, that was Allah getting angry. But let, if not, Uthman, he said, as to him, watch this, this is Muhammad. By Allah, death has overtaken him, and I hope the best for him. By Allah, though I am the apostle of Allah, yet I do not know what Allah will do to me. I hope the best for him, but I don't even know what Allah will do with me. So I cannot tell you whether he's in paradise or not. Now contrast that to the words of Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he who believes and lives shall never die. Do you believe this? John 11, 25, 26. You see the difference? Yeah. And, I mean, it, it's just interesting that um, if you think about that position, hey, this is one of the best guys I know. This is one of the best guys I know. If he's not making it to heaven, what hope is there for any of us? Exactly. And Muhammad doesn't say simply, yeah, you're right. He says, what are you talking about? I'm better than him, and I don't know where I'm going. I can't tell you where I'm going. I can't tell you where I'm going, and I'm a prophet, right? So not only am I the best among you, and I can't even say I'm good enough, uh, even with my knowledge, even with my prophetic knowledge, I can't tell you what's going to happen to me. Exactly. And, and, and people wonder why, why Muslims go out and blow themselves up uh, in a jihad to try and gain assurance of salvation, that they have done something so wonderful for Allah that he will, he will have to grant them paradise, right? Yeah, and in and, and light of what you said, people having to blow themselves up in order to at least make it to paradise, because even then that's not guaranteed. Another proof that Muhammad is not saved, though we know from a biblical perspective he's not saved, but mm -hmm. Islamically speaking, ask Muslims why do they pray for his peace every time they mention his name, because the Quran commands Muslims to pray for Muhammad, and you'll hear Muslims in Arabic saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which literally means, the prayers and peace of Allah be upon him. Why are you asking for Allah's peace to be upon Muhammad if he's already in a state of peace? 
Do you pray for Paul, the, for the, uh, Christ's peace to be on Paul? Do you pray for Christ's peace to be on Peter? No. Or you know they're already in a state of peace. They're in perfect mm -hmm. bliss, basking mm -hmm. in the infinite love of God. Why are Muslims continually praying for the peace of Allah to be upon Muhammad if he's already in a state of peace? Because Muhammad taught them to do that, right? You got it. He did. All right. Well, uh, if you Muslims can sleep at night knowing that even Muhammad wasn't good enough and didn't know enough to know that he was actually going to paradise, um, if you think about all the things you've done in your life, uh, what hope do you have 